Good morning, dear friends. We are gathered here in this safe space provided by the Almighty God to worship. So wherever you're joining us from, I welcome you and I ask God's protection and blessing for you and your families. Today we will offer Mass for you. And so please bring up your intentions, place them in this altar and let us offer them to God who cares, who loves, and who promise to provide for our needs. We continue to pray for our country, especially at this time of great strife. But God may help us build a safer, more hospitable, and a more accommodating country for each other. We pray for an end to the violence and to the routings that people may protest peacefully. We pray for the protection of our police force, and all those who keep our society and community safe. We pray for justice for everyone who has been violated. I also want us to pray for those who are sick from this coronavirus. We pray and ask that God may come to their help, that God may help them heal. Pray for our doctors and our nurses. Pray for our researchers, that God may help them find a cure or at least a vaccine for this virus. I also want to pray in this Mass for Bernadette Clements, who has been battling lung cancer and is in her last days, that God may safely and peacefully keep her until the day he chooses to call her home. Pray for her family. God may also be with them at this very difficult time. I pray for Andrea, who passed away a few days ago. Pray for Enrique Yamoka. Pray for Geneva Massacoy. Pray also for Lelani Jordan. Pray for all these souls that passed away during this time from the virus. May God rest them and may God give them peace. For today, we will sing the song, City of God. Awake from your slumber. Arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord our life and our Lord has turned the night into day. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Today, we will offer this Mass for the intentions already mentioned, but today is also an important day, an important day in the history of our country, in the history of our world. On this day, on this day, one hundred and about sixty thousand men, brave men, charged down the beaches of France for the liberation of Europe. It was a costly day because thousands and thousands of those men reside today in Normandy, in those cemeteries. And so we bless God for their courage, we bless God for their sacrifices. We bless God for the freedom that their courage brought to the world and pray that we may have the courage to rise when our own challenges come and face them and secure a better world for our children and for our children's children. Today we also remember all those who have birthdays and pray for them that God may bless them on these birthdays or anniversaries that they celebrate. And so to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. 
Lord have mercy. He came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep us, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that may work for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God, and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. That following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted by myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardships, perform the works of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like libation, and the time for my departure is at hand. I have completed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall be filled with your praise and your glory day by day. Cast me not off in my old age as my strength fails. Forsake me not. I will sing of your salvation. But I will always hope and praise you ever more and more. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day, your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. I will trip of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. You have taught me from my youth until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers they will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people sat in large sum, put, put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Men, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all other contributors to the treasury. 
for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, a whole life with me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the readings are so rich. I hope you would make time on your own to go back and read them and just reflect on them on your own. But I, I just want to make a few points here from the Gospel reading. We hear Jesus chastising the scribes and Pharisees for their hypocrisy. And I think about our own hypocrisy because every one of us does have something about us that we hide. Whether it's our pain, our fear, our sins, our wrongs, whatever it is. I know it's so very easy to focus on the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the scribes and people out there in, in the public eye. But today we are also invited to think of our own hypocrisy. The biases we hide and never acknowledge or admit. Those things that make us cringe. We will just hide them as much as possible just so that no one knows that that's who we are. If it's possible, we can say them where no one knows who is saying them. Those are the things that the Lord wants us to confront. There are many of us who don't believe that we are racist or we have racial biases or other forms of biases against or prejudices against people. The Lord is not asking us to go and confess publicly, but is asking us to take, to take stock of what exactly informs, what exactly we know of ourselves. Gain some self-awareness, the kind of things you're able to tolerate from one person and not someone else, and ask yourself, why do I do that? Is that something I'm willing to own? Something I'm willing to embrace. So that's the first thing that the Lord spoke about today. About being honest with ourselves. And recognizing our own hypocrisy. It's important. Because sure, we can be hypocrites before each other. But it's impossible to be hypocrites before the Almighty God. That doesn't work because he knows. The beautiful son says, he searches the heart. Oh Lord, you search my heart and you know me. So I, I'll, I'll invite you to reflect on that. Reflect on the things that you know about yourself. The things that you are uncomfortable to have others know. Why is that? And what can you do about it? Because you can't do something about it. And that leads me to the next thing. We see how this poor widow, she goes to the church, to the temple, not to the temple, to the synagogue. And so the Lord is sitting at the synagogue and he watches as people are bringing money, offering. And of course, the rich guys were bringing in a lot, you know, and you could tell that's a lot of money they were bringing. This poor widow, I'm not sure exactly, but I believe she wanted to give whatever she had. She didn't have much. She knew she didn't have much. She was not ashamed she didn't have much. So here, she, that's why the Lord connects these two things. She is comfortable in her own poverty, in her own state, and is not ashamed. 
She knows people will see that all she is bringing is just two cents, two small coins. She's not afraid. She's not ashamed of that. That's who she is. So she's comfortable in who she is. She knows herself. She knows her condition. And she's okay to bring that up to God. So she brings those two small coins and puts them in the offering. And it got the Lord's attention. It got caught God's attention. And he said to the apostles, see that woman? She is the most generous of everyone who is here today. Now you might ask yourself, generous with just two small coins? Yes. It isn't about what is given. It is about how it is given. So what is given? It is the motive, the intent behind what is given. The sacrifice behind what is given. And so if you are afraid today, maybe ashamed to do what is in your heart because of how people are going to look at you or people are going to judge you or the friends you might lose because of trying to do what is right for you. I hope you will find the courage that this woman had to free herself from whatever anyone was going to think about her and just to go ahead and do what she felt was right for her to do. I promise you, if you and I can overcome our smallness, our shame, our fear, our guilt, whatever it is, our guilt, if we can just overcome people's opinion and choose to do our, what our consciences constantly knock for us to do, we will get God's attention. But if we are doing what others care about and to win the opinions of others, Yes, we will get their attention. But the sad thing is, that can only serve us here. That has no business on what happens with God. You can get God's attention today. I can get God's attention today when I can do what I know is right. Not for anyone, but for the glory of God. And so right today, right now, you know what exactly you have been battling trying to do and why you have been afraid to do it. Maybe because you think it's not, what, what difference does it make? It's only just me. It's only this. It's only that. So you look for justification. I look for justification for not to do what I should do. This woman had two small coins. If that's all you have, if that's all you have, I promise you, if you do it with the right intention, you will get God's attention. You will attract God's attention. You will get him to see you, to hear you, to listen to you, and to do for you what he knows you deserve. Don't let fear force you to not do what's right. Don't let the opinion of others make you cave from doing what's right. Don't let how others perceive you stop you from being yourself. You were created by the Almighty God and given the opportunity to shine. That little light, let it shine. With those two small coins, you can change your world. You can change your life. You can change your society. You can change someone else. You can change the future for your children. You can change this world for posterity with those two small coins. I hope you are able to use your two small coins well. It's always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, today we just want to thank you and bless you and honor and adore you. What a wonderful day. Today is June 6th. On this day in 1944, the last battle for freedom struggle and thank God you gave freedom we beg you almighty God that as we continue to fight 
and to work for a better world, that the sacrifices of these great men may be the inspiration that guide, that guide the steps we take, the policies we make, the legislations we make, that guide the way we interact with each other, that guide the society we build. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for those who are battling coronavirus. Pray that Almighty God may deal with them, that you may help them find healing, that you may protect the members of their families, nurses and doctors who care for them, that together we may win this battle against this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died around this time. Pray especially, Almighty God, for Andrea. We pray for Enrique. We pray for Lelani. We pray for Geneva. We ask, Almighty God, that you may grant them peace and rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are really, really sick of other, other diseases, cancers and tumors. Pray especially for Bernadette Clements, who is battling her lung cancer. Dear God, only you know how to heal us. Please be with her. If it pleases you to take her home, spare her further suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today we also remember the assassination of Robert Kennedy on this day. We ask Almighty God that in his spirit our country may recognize the evil of shedding innocent blood that we may set ourselves on the path to greater respect for human life. Help us, O oh God, to build a nation where no one feels left out or oppressed. That's what Robert was fighting for. We beg you, dear God, help us to build a world that is truly home for all of your children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own intentions and for all the concerns that you have brought here today. We ask that God, who has promised that if we open our hearts and bring our cares to him, that he will act on them. That he may keep his word and attend to all and every of the concerns that you have brought here today. That in return, he may grant you his blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays or weddings anniversaries for today. We ask Almighty God that you bless them and that you keep them safe and that you grant them many more healthy and joyful years to celebrate. And we bring all of this consent before our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spirit children. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in so on by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglie, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Andrea, Enrique, Liliani, Geneva, whom you have called from this world to yourself, O Lord. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merry to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our God gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and envy in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace.
and from me to you and to your loved ones. May God's peace rest and remain forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be free. Gracious God, at this time where your children are unable to participate physically in your body and blood, they ask for the grace nonetheless. So we beg you, by your power as God, go before every member of their families and bless them spiritually with your Eucharist. May they feel the full effects of this sacrament, O oh God, today, tomorrow, and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O oh Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like us to say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. My dear friends, as always, I like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. And if you are still unable to attend Mass or in your local parishes, we will be having Mass at 9 o'clock Eastern tomorrow, which is 2 p.m. Nigerian time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll sing the songs. Will you come and follow me if I dare call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same. Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? Will you leave yourself behind if I dare call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you reach the whole
most high stead, should your life our trough to stay, will you let me answer your sin?